Hello, beautiful Tina Hong. Welcome, everyone. This is our third panelist. I'm so honored to have Tina Hong here. I'm going to introduce her in a few minutes. First, uh, someone mentioned that the last two interviews that I did with the panelists for the Women's Health Forum that I didn't introduce myself. So I'm going to introduce myself. I am Jackie Castro Cooper. I'm a holistic, I'm sorry, I am a spiritual being having a human experience. And my work is as a virtual holistic alternative physical therapist. I'm the creator of the self-care self-love movement. I'm also the author of The Power of Self-Care Self-Love, uh, a physical therapist guide to evolving into your higher self. And I have also created an online self-treatment video series, which I'm actually going to pop in here because Tina always reminds me to promote it because it's such a great course. So there it is, Back and Neck Pain Relief, The Surprising Gut and Brain Connection. All right. So <laughs> there is me. So now, welcome, Tina. I'm going to introduce you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So Tina Hong is an executive health coach who provides guidance, tools, and strategies for busy professionals who are struggling with weight loss, depression, and anxiety, food and substance addictions, high stress, and adrenal fatigue. Her transformational programs include one-on-one -on -one coaching, group wellness workshops, and well, uh, wellness workshop challenges. Uh, she's a corporate health and wellness program person as well. So Tina believes that by connecting with one's deeper self in a more intuitive and conscious way, then midlife weight loss and health will turn around permanently. And this is achievable. And so I am so honored to welcome you, Tina. I just love that you and I have become really good friends. And I love your whole aura, your mindset, your kindness, and your compassion with all your clients. I've seen you at your best. And let me tell you, I am just so impressed. And that's why I wanted to have you with us for the Women's Health Forum, which is April 21st, as everyone can see there at 6 p.m. Eastern time. You do have to register for the Women's Health Forum. So welcome, Tina. What do you, what do you like to say anything? Yeah. So Jackie, I am so humbled and honored to be here with you. Um, and I just love co-moderating um, the power of self-care, self-love on the Clubhouse app. And it's been such a joy over the last few months because what you're doing is changing the paradigm of taking care of oneself. It's not just going out and getting your manicure done. It's really about deep inner work. And so I'm so grateful for all the inspiration and all the love that you are spreading around the world through Clubhouse and through the work that you're doing. So I'm so grateful and honored to, to be a part of this. And I'm super honored to be a part of the Women's Health Forum. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to be able to answer questions uh, live. So that's what's so exciting. Once someone, uh, a woman registers, then we send you the link later on and you'll join us. Uh, that day and you can actually ask us a question. Uh, but there's other people who are in different time zones in different parts of the world, so they won't be able to join us live, but they can register and then they'll just watch the replay. We, we will send it to them. All right, so I, I, I can't believe this is like the most amazing topic, three ninja power moves to radically shift your health dur during overly demanding times. Perfect. So Tina, tell us, what are these three ninja moves? Yeah, so uh, three ninja moves. Okay, so, so for the last decade, I've been working specifically with midlife professionals, both men and women, to accelerate their weight loss through natural means, through changing their dietary habits, through managing stress and mindset, and also um, changing their shifting, shifting how how it's possible, not just in terms of nutrition mechanics, but also the daily habits. And so, um, so uh, the three ninja power moves. Number one, 
Um, what I found in the last decade of working with midlife busy professionals is that mindful eating is a big challenge, slowing it down. And when you are actually mindfully eating, slowing down um, your eating habits, digestion begins in your mouth right? Through your saliva, through uh, breaking down the fibers, breaking down the proteins in your mouth. And most people, when they're in a rush or they're multitasking in front of their computers or eating in their car on the way to work or whatever it might be, eating standing up, um, that uh, really they have difficulty. There's a direct correlation between digest you know good digestive health and actually being able to chew their food in a healthful and and um slow manner so uh slowing it down um and putting the fork down between bites when yeah. you actually are conscientious about putting the fork down between bites you can actually chew your food and liquefy the food in your mouth before you swallow. That's part of the digestive process. We oh have gosh. Love it, love it. Tina, thank you so much for saying that because mm -hmm. as you said, the alimentary canal begins in the mouth. Mm -hmm. And so when you said the word liquefy, you're one of the very few people that I know that actually says that. Mm -hmm. we, must, we must all chew our food until it's liquid before we swallow. And mm -hmm. you're right. We're eating in so many different places. We're never even eating in front of uh, sitting down at a table. Um, and when I went to Europe, I noticed that that was a big, huge difference. Like people weren't shoving food in, into their mouth. They were eating super slow. And like you said, putting their fork down. But what's fascinating is there is evidence based research now that shows that irritable bowel syndrome or actually mm -hmm. leaky gut as well leaky gut as well is connected to people that are not chewing their food and i'm definitely one of them mm -hmm. uh chewing their food until it's liquefied so leaky gut is directly correlated with thank you so much for bringing that up yeah and it's and it's so true and you, and you think about seniors or people who have false teeth or implants or in between implants mm -hmm. where they're unable or, or even just you know you know, oral health issues, and then they're unable to chew their food, there is a direct correlation with their digestive health. There's no, absolutely, it makes sense. If they're, they're not chewing their food, they're actually, you know, breaking the lining of their digest, the digestive tract, all of that. Um, so, uh, so the thing is putting the fork down between bites, liquefying the the food and chewing your food all the way to liquid, liquid, you know, paste, mm -hmm. and then swallowing, and actually breathing. So most people are racing around, and especially if there's kids involved, there's there's caretaking involved. They're not conscious of their eating habits, and to actually slow it down and breathe in between bites, and to actually enjoy their food and to savor their food in a slow way, is a direct actual impact. If when they can control this they're able to lose weight just by doing that. That is a major ninja power move. And all of my clients go through that in the first 30 days of working with me. We talk about mindful eating at every session. <laughs> and then, okay, ninja power move two is I'm gonna talk about carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates. We know refined carbohydrates, uh, foods such as pasta, uh, bagels, um, you know, white breads and, and, and cereals. We know those refined carbohydrates have a significant um, hit to your insulin. And when you are carrying more than 20, 30, 50 pounds of um, extra weight around, your insulin is probably not as, as, as efficient as it should be. So um, one ninja power move is just to get like a MyFitnessPal app or a chronometer app mm -hmm. and get an idea of what your carbohydrate intake is actually. So just put it, just to put it into context, 50 grams of carbs is, is pretty much one cup of spaghetti. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay. So mm -hmm. if you're having 50 grams of carbs and most people who are highly addicted to carbohydrates are spiking their insulin all day long and they're unable to actually lose weight. So it's not about being on the treadmill for 10 hours. You know, you're never going to get down um, to your fat stores and be able to lose weight, it's going to be very difficult unless you reduce the amounts of refined carbohydrates. So 50 grams of carbs, if you can try to get to 50 grams of carbs in total throughout all your meals throughout the day, um, you know, and, you know, if you think about vegetable carbs, a whole plate of spinach, maybe 20 grams of carbs. But compared to a whole bagel, which is like 40, 50 grams of carbs. Mm. So think about it. So do you want the bagel that's 50 grams of carbs or do you want 20 grams of, you know, a, a plate of green leafy vegetables? What do you think is going to be actually healthier for you? So my nutrition program, weight loss program, is really about nutritional weight loss. Really be able to eat nutrient-dense foods to help you reset your hormones and be able to get better sugar balance. Love it. Oh my gosh. Love it. And if I can uh, interject for a moment. So the pancreas, right? The mm -hmm. pancreas makes insulin. So mm -hmm. what is insulin? So if we can all visualize insulin, it's like you're in New York city, right? You're hailing a taxi. So when we eat, eat those carbs, right? Or sugar and things like that, or the pastas, what happens is that we're the the sugar is hailing a taxi, and a taxi comes in, and it's insulin. Mm -hmm. The sugar gets into the insulin. The insulin carries it to a place where it needs to be broken down. But sometimes, if we're overweight, it's going to just shove it to where wherever it can. Like maybe the arteries, maybe the fat cells, right? Mm -hmm. And pancreas is like shooting out all this insulin or these taxis because there's so much so many carbs coming in the body is not used to that mm -hmm. our dna has not changed that much since mm -hmm. we were cave people mm -hmm. We've been, uh, homo sapiens have been here for three hundred thousand years our dna has not changed that much so all this processed food and extra carbs, not eating more plant-based food, it confuses our body still. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to just stop because there's an epidemic of diabetes mm -hmm. in our country and, um, and not, not even in our country, in the world. And so I'm really grateful that you talk about insulin and that you also mm -hmm. are very well versed in the hormones as well. And, you know, your weight loss programs, you have helped people uh, lose up to like a hundred pounds, right? Yes, I have. Yeah. And it's amazing. Um, and, and losing a hundred pounds is pretty serious. I mean, you know, they're, um, in a morbid, very high risk obesity rate. Um, and, um, just being able to start in the process of changing your habits over time, it is totally possible to do this naturally without doing gastric bypass surgeries or dangerous interventions like that. You could just do this by moving your body and actually eating nutrient dense foods that your body needs to rebuild your hormones and to, to actually get back to resetting your hormones. Whereas if you've been on a high carbohydrate, high sugar diet, your body is not really reading that information as nutrition. Mm -hmm. Your body is reading that as empty nutrition. What, what did doc, Dr. Mark Hyman said, Americans are overfed and undernourished. I mean, that is so true. And we have such an epidemic of type two diabetes. Type two diabetes is totally treatable, is totally treatable. Yeah. And it's so important to start uh, as soon as possible with that. Um, and I know that you help people um, and guide them one on one. And also you do the group uh, coaching. I know you're going to bring this up later, but you have something coming up and I wanted to mention it right now, which is the 90 day unstoppable health. And yeah. that's to help people with weight loss, because we really have to look at it as a health crisis. Right. Um, mm -hmm. 
eating poorly, gaining weight, and also lots of other uh, issues that go on. Because for me, I'm a big gut and brain person. And that's what I think connected me so much to you, Tina, because whatever is happening in your gut, whatever we're putting into the intestinal system, we've got 25, 27 feet of intestines. Mm -hmm. If they're not breaking down the food correctly, and it's just storing it as uh, fat cells, right? Mm. is confused it doesn't know what to do mm. uh, but it's it's a health crisis also for our children mm. you know kids mm. the food that we have in the school system so i'm just grateful that you're doing that and um so and your weight loss group coaching starts april 19th through june 20th so if anyone's on here who wants to do that no you're going to talk about it again later but i just wanted to stick that in because i think it's really life-saving uh the work that you do tina yeah during the 90-day program um it's it's pretty much a pre-summer program and you will have the tools of what to eat what not to eat and we'll be measuring and tracking you along the way and there will be an exercise component to it as well so you have options to move your body mm -hmm. and then is um this is a this is a lot of the work that a lot of the protocols and the programming that i do privately with one-on-one -on -one clients i um offer that in a group coaching format which is awesome because what people love is the accountability of their peers mm -hmm. and when they see somebody else you know making progress it's motivating so it's really fun and it's a really great way to um, establish some habits long term. It's not a diet. It's literally about changing your habits long term and really knowing what to eat to um, to lose weight in a very healthy manner. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and you know that's my whole personal story too. Is I'm I'm doing this because in midlife I'm very much interested in helping people turn their health around before it's too late. There's been too many stories. My personal story with my dad, who had uh, who I'd taken care of, who had can terminal stage four cancer for ten years. You know, very close friends of mine who have been gung ho high achievers. Um, you know, making lots of money and being successful, but putting their health on the back seat. So this is you. My program is totally for you because we're going to reprogram your mindset and habits so that you have better control, that you are not putting your health in the backseat and that, that you're not putting it on hold. Because if you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, this is the time to do it. Yes. So. Yay. So excited. Good yeah. job. Yeah. So what's the, oh, what's the number three? Yeah. So we actually, I forgot one thing about the mindful eating piece is aside from just chewing your food and putting your fork down and breathing, no multitasking, not multitasking, not eating in front of the television or your okay. computer. And it is so hard for people to turn things off, but, um, it is so critical because you are become, you're raising your consciousness about how you're taking care of yourself, how you're loving yourself through the foods that you're eating. And when you raise your consciousness, you make different kinds of decisions. So I just for, I forgot to add that part on on um, the Ninja Power One, <laughs> Ninja Power Move One. And may I add also, when I went to Europe, I remember everyone had fresh, not everyone, but where I went, they had fresh flowers on the table and mm. everyone sat down and there was sometimes music playing. Mm -hmm. So for people who like always eat in front of the TV, that's also a little bit of a, an option, just playing some nice uh, gentle music or whatever kind of music that soothes you, that actually slows down that energy system in the body so that we can rest and digest because we're eating and we're in some of us are in the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight, flight, freeze, hurry up, I gotta eat, I gotta go to work, I gotta go to this, I gotta pick up the kids, I gotta, you know, all that stuff. And that's fight, flight, freeze. But when we slow down, like you're saying, Tina, and we put the fork down and we eat consciously, sitting also, because the brain doesn't supposedly, I remember reading this a long time ago, and I don't know if you agree, but sitting down sends signals to the brain that you're eating. But if you're standing up and eating, the brain is kind of like a little confused. And so you're actually going to feel fuller when you eat slower, 
liquefy the food mm-hmm. and then not uh, you're not distracted. So yes, thank you so much for bringing that up, Tina. I appreciate yeah, it. Uh, throughout the year, I offer um, a course called Eating as a Meditation and I get into all the five senses, mm. surroundings and what it, you know, and, and, and last year, last summer, I ran the program and um, one of the group participants came to um, sh- shared a picture in the group and she was eating her lunch at work on her blue Wedgwood China. <laughs> and I was like, that is so awesome, you know, because it was an, a statement of I am taking an act of nourishment and self care in such a bold and powerful way, just in terms of how, where my food is presented, how my food is presented. So. Mm-hmm. Yes. And people uh, who know me, when they come over to my house to eat, I always have candles on. I love that. Me too. I learned that from an Irish couple that I I grew up watching. Uh, They had 11 children. They Mm -hmm. fed them and then they would uh, send them off to bathe. They would bathe each other, the kids, the oldest kids. And they would sit there and um, uh, beautiful candles and they would sit and eat. Their house was a wreck, right? Why wouldn't it be with 11 kids? But they sat down quietly and mm. had candles. I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. And so because of them, I always put candles on. For me, it connects me to spirit, right? To my beautiful, uh, my the connection with mindset to beauty. So yes, oh, I'm so glad we're bringing all this up. I, knew, I love it, I love it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, Buddhist teachings that I bring into um, my mindfulness practices for my clients through my group work and also the uh, one-on-one work. Um, and so, you know, beauty and presence and and spirituality is a big part of it. And then, so Power Ninja Move Three is sleep hygiene. So, how many people are not getting enough sleep and waking up? you know, not refreshed and still tired. So sleep hygiene is so important. And if you are having difficulty getting seven to eight hours of sleep, I just want you to know this is one of the major ninja power moves for accelerating fat loss and really um, getting your health and energy back on a daily basis. Um, It's not just about, you know, it's about resetting your body. It's about refreshing all the things that we've done throughout the day to actually be hard on ourselves in terms of stress, in terms of physical activity, um, whatever it might be. Even emotional stress, um, you know, translates into physical stress. And that nighttime is truly, truly about resetting your entire body. It's a reboot. And so that seven to eight hours is really, really critical. And those people who spend more time sleeping at night straight through have higher likelihood of success in losing weight, losing body fat. Those people who are up till two or three o'clock in the morning and only getting four to six hours of sleep have much more difficulty because their brain is saying they're tired and then that's when they gravitate towards junk okay because they they want empty energy they want they need that energy so that that's so super important and part of sleep hygiene is you know uh, being able to have lights out completely no television while you're sleeping half asleep you know the television in the room that makes me crazy when people are you know they have their television on timers but your brain is listening your brain is like watching you know mm-hmm. subconsciously listening to all that while you even have your eyes closed so you're not really getting the true rest that you need um, And also, you know, temperature, being comfortable in temperature, not too hot and not too cold. Um, Typically at night, our body, body temperatures cool down, right? Mm -hmm. So, so to actually, um, you know, you, you, it cools down, but you don't want to over insulate either because you're actually, um, you know, you're, you're eliminating while you're sleeping as well. Right. So you're burning through, you're, you're eliminating sweat and perspiration and oxygen while you're sleeping. And so um, the sleep hygiene piece is so important, like taking a nice uh, bath or a hot shower before you go to sleep. 
Um, if you take baths, taking a, a, a Epsom salt bath, which is wonderful for you to decompress, you know, your muscles and your just the and even using aromatherapy at night, um, like lavender and you know, you know things like that that actually can relax you. Having a wind down routine is so important. Mm -hmm. And most people, uh, they eat dinner. An hour later, they're into bed. They're on their phone. They're watching TV. And really, they're they're doing this for another hour before they go to sleep. And so they're, they've got a lot of stuff on their mind still before they actually get into bed. There's no peace that they're getting into bed. There's no preparation. Right. So sleep hygiene is so important. Um, and taking the steps to really wind it down before um, before your head hits the pillow. Yes, and I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, there are m many of my patients are having such difficult times sleeping. And so I love that you brought the, up the sleep hygiene. Um, another thing I recommend, and I used to have difficulty sleeping a couple of years ago, I start to turn off the lights around the house Mm -hmm. about an hour before and I start to put a little candle on or a small tiny little lamp that I have uh, next to the bed and I, I don't use a bright light when I'm um, cl cleansing my face or brushing my mm -hmm. teeth. I use a smaller light in the bathroom so I start to um, signal to my brain that you know the circadian rhythm is something that I'm going to honor you know, uh, it's been dark for a long time, but I really didn't want to go to sleep at eight o'clock. So now it's nine o'clock and I'm going to start to lower the lights around the house. Um, I'm also going to put something on that's really uh, comfortable. So a lot of people, it's really important to find good comfy pajamas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and also people are using now weighted blankets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm from anxiety for example the weighted blanket is really helping a lot and then i also offer a bit of twisting the body before you go to sleep i get on the floor and i do some yoga twisting or just you know knee to chest and then twisting mm -hmm. you know anything like that right hips there and then just twisting the body so tw twisting takes out toxins from the body mm -hmm. and um, so it's also good to do but the deep breathing while you're stretching and mm. twisting before you go to sleep is a life changer for me. It's been so, so good. So I never go to bed until I'm on the floor doing a little bit of twisting, stretching my legs, um, and just taking some deep bre uh, deep breaths. And then the one last thing I, or two last things I do, if, if there's something that I'm worried about, I write it down, a little sticky note next to the bed. Mm. And I say, I'm not going to think about this tonight because it's going to be there in the morning and I can pick it up and read it tomorrow morning. There's actually a quick little story that I share with my patients who have a lot of difficulty sleeping and also have anxiety. Uh, the story is that there was this man who he would pull into his driveway and lean over and touch the branch of a tree. Mm -hmm. And his neighbor would watch him do this every single day. And finally he goes, hey dude, how come you're doing this every single day? You're leaning over, touching the branch, and then you go inside. And he says, because I've got so many issues at work and so many things are going on in my life. When I enter my home, I want it to be a peaceful, loving place. So I can share something with my wife maybe later on. But when I come in, I want to be uh, free of all those worries and those questions and those issues and those problems. So I give it to the tree before I go home. I mean, before I go inside. And so I found that fascinating. And then he said, and what you don't see is when I come out of the house in the morning, I reach over to the branch. I take back all those worries and questions and issues and problems. And they are much less heavier. And there are not as many. So that's what I did before I go to sleep. And I share that with everyone. You just write something down on a sticky note, like you're giving it to the branch of the tree. And you'll just wake up in the morning. They're still going to be there probably, or maybe not. Maybe you'll have this wonderful revelation that um, it's, it's, um, it's not there anymore, or you found the solution to the worry, right? So that's that's exactly right. that problem is still going to be there in the morning, no matter how much your brain is crunching overnight. It doesn't matter. It's not going to change anything. It's right. not. It's not going to solve it. 
by the morning. <laughs> exactly. So, so the, the, and for me, sleep, like you said, it helps to, for weight loss and just for general health, but also, um, sleep is a holy time. So it's a, it's a, for me, it's a holy time. It's a place where we can return to the subconscious, which runs our life 95% of the time, right? We just go back in and we just, we're just there and we just are present with the holiness of sleep. And so that was a big game changer for me as well. And then I also read one or two things, maybe like a sentence or two of something inspirational that I always have uh, by my bedside table. I love Marianne uh, Williamson's uh, A Return to Love. I mm -hmm. always have it there, but Dr. Wayne Dyer's books, um, mm -hmm. Power of Intention, Inspiration, all those books are just so uplifting and beautiful to just read a sentence before you go to sleep. And it's a message. It's a message to be at peace and, and uh, be in oneness, right? With exactly. love, with peace, with joy, uh, oneness with God, you know, um, universe also. Mm -hmm. So that I just love that we were able to talk about this. I am so grateful. We did it, Tina. We did it. 30 minutes. So please tell everybody um, you, uh, your 90 day unstoppable health yeah. and is a group coaching program for weight loss. So that starts uh, when again? It's on April 19th. It's a 90 day uh, group coaching program and you'll be in a private group. Um, and basically, if you're interested in losing 20 pounds, um, this is for you. Um, over 90 days to get some pounds down before the summer, get some inflammation down, reprogram how you eat and how you uh, nourish yourself. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, this is a proven program that I've done with my one-on-one -on -one clients as well as group coaching clients. So um, you will absolutely lose weight without having to have, you know, you know, um, um, unnatural intervention. So this is going to be really fun. Um, and you will definitely enjoy it. Yes. So that starts April 19th. And one way to, um, check in about that is, um, uh, you could, I'm asking for uh, applications. So I'm, I'm doing a health intake on every single person to see if they qualify for the program. And so uh, you could, uh, uh, you know, set up a book, a one on one complimentary, absolutely free 60 minutes with me at bit.ly forward slash unstoppable health. And you will have 60 minutes. I'll give you a health scorecard, weight loss scorecard during our, our discussion. And um, we'll discuss if this program is for you. Wonderful. Beautiful. So just another little I'm going to share our little um a little flyer there. So everybody, please register for the women's health forum.org. It's the April 21st at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central. And we're going to have five panelists. And as you can see, Tina Hong is going to be one of them. So we are so excited. And next week, we're going to have uh, our last panelist, Dr. Devin Miles, and she is uh, a doctor of naturopathy. So I'm excited about having Dr. Miles here with us and she'll be our last panelist interview. And then the following week, we actually do it. So register for the womenshealthforum.org because in order to participate in it and to ask your question, you have to register because it's not a public. So this, all these interviews that I've been doing um, is to share these amazing panelists. But that day, it's going to be a private uh, se a session uh, where women can ask questions, any kind of questions of the five of us. And I created this in 2017. And for the first time, we're going to have it virtually and globally. And I'm excited because women have, you know, we as women, we need to know what other things are out there to help us to heal ourselves, right? So um, medicine is so incredibly important for us. Our beautiful doctors and nurse practitioners and nurses and physicians assistants, you know, what would we do without them? But there's also another world, a holistic alternative world that we can also incorporate, right? With our beautiful medicine that a lot of people are not aware of. So women, uh, since we are the main caregivers of our families, we have to keep ourselves healthy. We have to care and love ourselves because if we don't do it, then who's going to do it? Right, Tina? Exactly. 
<laughs> we got as my as my mom and grandma always said, and I say it in the, in my book as well. Your body, mind, and spirit are holy. Treat them like that. You know, treat them like that. You only get one body. That's it. Just one. All right, everybody. So peace and love to everyone. Tina, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful wisdom with us and for giving us your time. I love you. And we will see you April 21st. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks, everybody. Yay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.